Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin and we're gonna be putting back on our on-chain analysis hat and discussing the HODL waves or HODL waves. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up and check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. The HODL waves uh, are bands that reflect what percentage of the supply has been unused in a transaction for a certain period of time. One of the things that I like to do is to, ice. I mean, it's hard to see what's going on here, but what I like to do is isolate short-term holders versus long-term holders. One interesting thing about this, when you look at long-term holders, what you'll notice is that long-term holders really only start to durably sell once Bitcoin has broken an all-time high. Okay, so if you look at last cycle, you can see that the, the HODL waves for long-term holders, which is in this case, anyone who has held Bitcoin for at least six months, um, that is where it started to go down, right? So, so when you hit new highs, that's where long-term holders really start to sell. They sell into those new all-time highs. You can see that it occurred in you know, 2020, 2021, it occurred in 2017, and then a couple of times over here in 2013, and in 2011, and so on and so forth. So when we hit new highs, long-term holders tend to sell into that. And you can see that it's typically separated by several years, uh, 2021, um, you know, 2017, 28, like, you know, late 2017. And then before that, it was 2013, right? So it does seem to be about every four years or so when we hit those new all-time highs where the long-term holders tend to sell into that. And that year tends to be the, the post-having year, right? So we're in the pre-having year now. The having year, of course, is next year, and then the post-having year will be 2025, and that's where long-term holders tend to sell the most because that's usually when Bitcoin is hitting is hitting those all-time highs. If you look at other examples, right, there's 2015, there's 2019, you can see that long-term holders did not really sell into it, and that's despite the fact that that Bitcoin you know, had a, a fairly significant sell-off, right? In 2019, Bitcoin sold off, you know, like 50% from, you know, basically from June until the end of the year, and then it went up, and then it sold off another like 60% into the pandemic. But long-term holders did not really sell that at all. I mean, of course, a little bit, right? I mean, if you if you really zoom in here, you know, going into the 2019 peak, I mean, like it, it, there were some people selling into that, but not very noticeable, right? Not a noticeable drop like 2021 and in, and in 2017 and 2013 and so on and so forth. And in the same way, right, like in 2015, long-term holders were not really selling into these pumps very much. So again, what it, what it really goes to show is that you have your, you know, you have your, your, your bear market year where the price basically just goes down. You have 2014, 2018, 2022. Then you have your pre-halving year where the market is a lot choppier. Arguably, this pre-halving year has, you know, has been more green than prior pre-halving years in terms of time spent going up. Not in terms of how much we went up, at least not so far. I mean, in 2019, Bitcoin went up, you know, more than 3x or so from its yearly open. And right now, Bitcoin is, is just over, you know, it's, it's a little over 2x off its yearly open. I believe the yearly open was around like 16.6K. So it's somewhere between a two to three X off, off the yearly open. But again, I mean, despite that, you'll notice that long-term holders are not really selling into that um, a whole lot, which is very similar to, to 2019 and very similar to 2015. And even when, even when price went down in 2015 and in 2019, uh, long-term holders, the hot waves just continue to go up. Now, if you look at short-term holders, it tells a very different story. What's interesting about short-term holders is that they tend to go up, the, the short-term HODL waves tend to go up into those all-time highs, right? So you can see it topped in 2021 and in 2017 and in you know 2013, right? That's where that top occurred. And then we had another top here in you know, just after the second high and so on and so forth. So what, what's really interesting is, is despite this move by Bitcoin, there hasn't really been an increase in the HODL waves for short-term holders. So it just goes back to this idea that you, you, know, you have these long accumulation windows 
from you know near the end of the bear market year all the way out until you know well after the halving for long-term holders that they sort of buy bitcoin they don't tend to sell it until bitcoin breaks all-time highs and then you know the speculators the tourists don't tend to show up until until you actually get to all-time highs right and then and then short-term holders really pile in and then the long-term holders basically sell to to the people that are only coming in once bitcoin breaks all-time highs so I think it's a useful a useful chart to look at because you, you can see that despite all the increase in price over here, the the hot waves for short term holders have just continued to go to go down, um, and it's very similar to 2019, right? Like you can see in 2019, short term holder the short term um, holders hot waves just went down, right? Like it 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 went down even throughout the entire 2019. I mean, it went up a little bit, right? But the general direction was down. And the general direction was down, despite the fact that Bitcoin went up, you know, 4x, and then it dropped 60, 70 percent. Short-term hot wave still went down, and it did not go up in a in a durable way until we reached all-time highs. So that's your hot waves for Bitcoin. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and again, check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at IntoTheCryptoverse.com, where you can of course get access to charts like this. Thank you guys for tuning in, and I'll see you next time. Bye.